Welcome to a review of La Famiglia from Puzzling Pursuits, who we have to thank for sending us a couple of their puzzle games to check out. La Familia is an escape room in a box style puzzle game published by Puzzling Pursuits in 2020. It's the first of three games in a trilogy, but stands alone as a single product as well, telling a complete story on its own. The puzzle game is designed for one to six players, though I think this one in particular is best at five. The game is split into two chapters, each of which can take upwards of two hours. Split the game over two nights and figure out the total time to be close to about four hours. The suggested age is listed at 14 plus, which seems a bit high. While there is talk of mafia hits in the game, there are no actual violent acts described, nor any gory descriptions or foul language. You can get La Familia on sale right now for $34.95 direct from Puzzling Pursuits, where it has a regular retail price of $60. Even better, if you buy two of their boxes at once, you save 20% off the second one. We would appreciate it if you used our affiliate link in the show notes below if you do go shopping there. It's Chicago, 1929. Al Capone was just arrested and there's a power vacuum now left behind. You are investigators contacted by the FBI to assist in their investigation into a gang called La Familia, a new gang that looks like it may be even more dangerous than Capone's own Chicago outfit up to you to decipher a number of coded messages being passed between the La Familia Capos and help the FBI find out what they're up to and stop them. For a spoiler-free overview of the components you get with this puzzle game, check out our La Familia unboxing video on YouTube. While you won't see any of the specific clues here, you do get a chance to see just how much you get in the box and the overall quality of the components. Yeah, unfortunately, without trying to spoil anything, there wasn't a lot I could go through in that particular box, but at least you see how much you get. Now, I will say the overall quality here is good, though really everything you get is just a series of different paper products. Um, these include multiple sealed envelopes and things like a newspaper segment, an invitation, menus, uh, posters, and more. Sadly, there's no neat stuff like watches, keys, or locks, or other physical products you sometimes see in other cape room-style games. Now, one complaint we did have with all of this stuff is that much of the glossy paper was not great for writing on, which leads me to another thing to be aware of with this game. You are meant to write on as well as fold some things. While it is theoretically possible to solve the case without destroying anything, you're going to go through a lot of scrap paper and probably some tracing paper as well. We started off trying to save the game so we could pass it on to someone else, but gave up partway through part one and just started folding and writing on things. Well, what is it we're doing with all of these different types of paper? Well, getting started in La Familia couldn't be easier. Gather together a group of players or sit down with the game on your own, open up the box, open up the big part one envelope, tell you find a sealed leather, once read, we'll tell you what to do next. One big advantage this style of game has over traditional board games is that there is zero prep time required. There's nothing to open up, punch and sort. There's no minis to assemble or a thick rule book to read. You just open things up and start reading the first thing you see. Now reading this will lead you to six puzzles. Five small individual puzzles that are independent of each other. And then a sixth meta puzzle that requires the solutions from the other five to solve. As you solve each puzzle, you're going to load up a Puzzling Pursuits webpage and check your answer. Note on that same page, you can also get some very well-written staged hints in case you do get stuck. Now, don't be afraid to use these hints. They are presented in small parts in order to not accidentally spoil anything. For each puzzle, the first hint just makes sure you have everything you need and provides a link to get replacement parts if something really is missing from your game. That's something we did not see with our copy. The actual solutions are usually three to five hints in, and early hints may just be the nudge your group needs to keep moving. Now, once you solve the final puzzle in part one, you put it in that uh, web page again and get a short story that continues the, the plot of the game. You're then going to move over to part two, which features another five individual puzzles and one final puzzle for you and your group to solve. Once you've confirmed the final solution on the website, the story wraps up and you're pointed to where to find more games as La Familia is actually part one of a trilogy of Chicago-based games. 
Now, despite this, La Familia does tell a complete story. It's not like you're left with a cliffhanger at the end, though I will admit it did leave us kind of wanting more. Now, on to some thoughts on this Chicago-based puzzle game. So having played Black Brim 1876, this was the first game we reviewed from Puzzling Pursuits, we all had a pretty good idea of what to expect from Familia, and all of those expectations were met. It, it did similar things, which to me is a good thing, because we enjoyed Black Brim quite a bit. Now, one of our favorite things about Black Brim is that it featured multiple individual puzzles that were independent from each other, which can then be easily split up between the players. This is also true of La Familia, with each chapter providing five standalone puzzles, as well as a meta, meta puzzle to wrap the end of each chapter. It was perfect for our group of five players, which included my mother-in-law, both my kids, my wife and I. And a real bonus compared to puzzles where each puzzle must be completed to move on, mm -hmm. as with more than two players, those styles can get awkward with too many hands and not enough material to let everyone take part. Now, one difference this time around, though, is that none of us managed to solve anything on our own. Every single puzzle in La Familia got passed around and teamed up on before we managed to solve them. For us, at least, the puzzles here were more involved and more difficult than in Black Brim 1876. And this is not a bad thing. A nice step up in difficulty, and I'm sure part of why it takes four hours. If everyone had just plowed through their chosen small puzzle, it would have been a much quicker race to the final meta puzzle. We especially enjoyed that nothing was as easy as it looked like in La Familia. Most of the puzzles had multiple steps. While that first step might be easy, you might look at a puzzle and think, oh, I know exactly what to do. You're going to overlay this over the maze, and then you're going to follow these steps and done. Well, it ends up the solution at the end of that just leads you to another puzzle. Now, this was especially true in part one. Everything had at least two steps. Now, puzzles in part two did have less steps, but they were more difficult in another way. They were really opaque into what to do to solve them. Here are all these things. What do I do with them? And that's good to hear they weren't all similar. Part two wasn't just more of the same with new clues. Very true. I thought the puzzle balance before between both chapters just felt about right. There was an interesting mix of what you'd expect, right? You've got some logic puzzles. There's a math puzzle, a vocabulary puzzle. There was some physical manipulation required, um, observation puzzles where you're trying to spot things, and of course, at least one puzzle it required some pretty outside of the box thinking, which was good to see. I would say the difficulty seemed pretty constant as well. There was nothing in this box that was super easy to solve. And yes, we had to use a few clues here and there to get through everything in a reasonable amount of time. While I feel like we would have got it eventually, we would have been well past the four hour time limit. Now, what we did never have to do is look up a final solution. In every case, we were stuck. We looked at one or two early clues that gave us that push to show us what we needed to figure out things on our own. Now, no, Mo did say time limit there, but this isn't a time based game. Uh, you don't suddenly lose points if you're no. not if you're done in, in in over four hours, but there is only so much time we have to play games. So <laughs> yeah, the time limit in this case was my kids' bedtimes because yeah. we played this on a school night. <laughs> now, having all the pieces is a nice touch. As, to, as sadly, we can't say that's been the case for all of the escape style puzzle games we have been sent. So, bravo for that. Now, the best part about La Familia, especially when you compare it to Black Brim 1876, and I'm sorry, they're both in the same company, I can't help but compare them, is the immersion you got while playing this particular game. In Black Brim, you were basically given a bunch of separate puzzles from a Riddler-like character who had nothing really to do with anything in the story. Someone captured cops, we don't know why, and you got to solve all these puzzles to get them free. You, you basically, that was it. There was no real tie-in to what you were solving. It was a puddle, puzzle master presenting you with puzzles. Whereas in La Familia, the clues you are given represent actual physical ciphers that La Familia goons are using to communicate with each other. And that's what they feel like. These feel like things that, like physical artifacts of things that could exist in that time period. This is like the poster that's on the wall and near the bathroom, right? It actually has a cipher in it while you have that poster. Now, added to that, the story is based on a real historic period and actual events that happened. The people involved are real people, and the overall case is based on events that actually happened. Now, I wouldn't call a familiar historic game, 
And I'm pretty sure it's not 100% historically accurate, but the tie-ins to real history does help you feel more immersed in the case. It actually feels like you're solving actual clues and ciphers and not just a bunch of random puzzles put into a box. This one actually interests me more than most of the others we've actually talked about. I'm, I'm not generally all that interested in partaking, and it, it's great that Moa and his uh, his family have been loving these, but I've always been interested in cryptography, and that aspect of this one in particular is something that caught my eye and might catch the eye of others who are interested in puzzles but maybe haven't really found the escape room in a box type to, uh, to their taste yet. Yeah, I almost wish we had kept it replayable and then he could have at least played around with it. Let's sit down with you, Tori, and Kat as I sit back and snicker because I know the answers. <laughs> Now, one thing my wife did note uh, that did take her out of the immersion is the modern nature of the physical products in La Familia. Well, the newsprint feels like it could be legit, I'm not sure they had thick, glossy cardstock in the 1920s. Having period quality paper would have been a next step that would have made La Familia experience even more engaging and probably would have made things easier to write on. Well, between pricing and resilience of the pieces needing to be manipulated, I'm sure choices were made during manufacturing that uh, put uh, a little bit of a historical accuracy uh, by the wayside. Yes, we, ha we have some anachrony in the physical products. Overall, uh, my family really enjoyed La Familia. This is an excellent puzzle-based game that my family had a great time solving together. We loved the way the puzzles were split into individual chunks and the immersion brought in by the puzzles being tied to the late 1920s gangster theme. Well, we did get stuck a few times, we had to team up on every puzzle, as well as using a few hints, we finished off feeling smart and accomplished, and that's always the feeling you want at the end of a puzzle escape room style experience. Now, if you dig puzzle games that include a wide range of puzzle types, including logic, word, math, and physical puzzles, you should check out La Familia. This is especially true if you dig the Al Capone Roaring Twenties theme, as it's integrated so well here. Now, what you won't find here is a murder mystery to solve. This is not that kind of puzzle game. This is not a crime scene investigation, a hunt a killer, uh, a mystery evening. This is more of an escape room in a box, though there's no box to escape in this particular case. But it fits that style of game. La Familia is all about solving puzzles and not deducing answers from a variety of different clues. Now, due to its theme integration, the style of puzzles that are in this, I do think this would be a good intro to Puzzling Pursuit style of puzzle games. While we did enjoy Black Brim a lot, we really liked it, the added level of immersion here made this even more engaging and also more memorable. If you don't like puzzles, this isn't going to be a game for you. There's no board game to be seen here, and the story isn't really deep enough to stand as a storytelling experience on its own. You would be better just grabbing a history book or doing some Googling to learn about the period on your own. Well, that's it for our review, review of La Familia, a puzzle game from Puzzling Pursuits and the first in a trilogy of Chicago themed games. Have you played any games based on this time period? What's your favorite? Let us know in the comments down below. When you've got time, I invite you to also check out my written review of La Familia over at the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. If you enjoyed this review, you can show your thanks by thanking, tipping your bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. 